Dave Palumbo here with Palumbo's Pythons and Boas for another installment of Muscle Serpent University. And you are staring here at a jungle jag carpet python. And that's what today's show is going to be about. Carpet pythons. Stay tuned. <laughs> All right, we're here in my facility, and as you can see, we're looking at a uh, pair that I'm trying to breed of uh, carpet pythons. This is a jungle jag uh, carpet python. She is nice and hefty, and I think that she might even be uh, knocked up, as we like to say. I'm not sure, but uh, right now, I don't see any breeding. They were breeding quite a bit back uh, like a week or two ago. So I don't know if they're taking a break or what, but I, I actually like to keep the carpets with each other. I might take them out every other week or every third week if I'm just going to give them a little bit of food. I give them very small meals in this season because we're cooling them and we don't want to put a lot of food in their tummies, especially because they really don't have the ability to digest huge meals because of the lack of heat we're giving them. But that lower heat obviously stimulates follicle development, so that'll make it them more likely to be able to produce babies and that's the goal here. Now, this is a sun glow carpet male I have in the back there and he is an albino and caramel uh, mixture. We call that a sun glow here in the US. <laughs> Every place else in the world they don't call that a sun glow. Uh, they call a hypo and an albino a sun glow but we call the, the caramel and albino a sun glow together so we should hopefully get some interesting babies from these two. Hopefully some jungle colored jags, head albino, that would be nice. Now, um, the jungle morph is interesting because there's another co-dominant, or as we like to say, incomplete dominant morph known as the zebra. So I'm gonna show you a picture of one. I don't have just a regular zebra. What I do have is a super zebra. While the zebra, carpet python, is a very, very busy pattern looking snake. The super zebra is actually a solid colored snake. It's actually a solid yellow. However, this is a super zebra azanthic. And as we know, the azanthic gene is recessive. The zebra gene is an incomplete dominant or codominant, some people like to call them. Uh, when the zebra gene is in just its single form, it's a very, very busy pattern animal. You know, just the, probably one of the busiest patterns of all carpet pythons. And in the super form, it's a solid yellow snake, which is amazing. Now, why isn't this snake solid yellow? Because the azanthic gene that's in this snake also removes yellow pigment. And what we're left with is basically a solid gray, I like to call it almost a metallic looking snake. And I think it's one of the coolest snakes that I've seen. And the interesting thing is that there's not many of these guys. Now, I've been growing her up nice and slowly. She's a great eater. You know, I'm trying not to overfeed her, especially when she's small. When she gets a little bigger and she can eat bigger prey, you know, she's just starting on like uh, medium rats. Um, she will then start to grow exponentially. That's pretty much the way it works. Uh, I don't know if she'll be ready to breed next year, probably the year after that. Like I said, I'm not rushing her. I'm still deciding who I actually want to breed her to. But when you think about it, a, a super zebra is kind of like the most unique looking of the carpet pythons because of the lack of pattern. And pattern seems to be the thing that almost defines carpet pythons in a sense. So there is many different forms. Uh, you know, I am also breeding, I have a pair of double het, which are het for azanthic and het for albino. And uh, I'm gonna show you them in a minute and we'll see what they could possibly produce. And maybe some of their offspring may at one point in time later, a year or two from now, breed with this super zebra. This is my most exciting breeding of the year for carpets. To be honest with you, I've never even produced a, a single carpet python baby yet. This is gonna be my first year really, because I bought all these snakes and they were really young, last three years, and I've been growing them up. And uh, this is exciting, because this is an azanthic, which takes away all the yellow pigment and it's combined with an albino. Now it's het for both, and both snakes are het for both, so they're double het for basically what we call a snow 
uh, carpet. Snow means albino azanthic and it produces a very white looking snake with very light yellow pattern. Uh, it's not completely white, but it's very, very, very light. And that's probably, you know, right now that's about the best thing we have in the United States. We don't have moon glows like they have, like Wayne Lark's produced in Australia. But as you can see, these are beautiful snakes in their own right. I mean, just a great pattern, um, great lines, but it's the double hat gene that they, we have in both of these guys. And if they do breed and produce babies, and I think my female might actually have some eggs in her. She's looking pretty big. I don't have an ultrasound machine, so it's hard to tell. You know, you try to palpate, but then I'm always afraid I'm gonna like, you know, mess something up. So I don't like to be too rough with these guys. We'll just let time tell. If they do produce the snow at some point, maybe a male snow, I might even think about breeding it to the super azanthic jaguar. Excuse me. I may think about breeding them to the super zebra azanthic, which would be a very, very interesting combination. Think about that. They would all be azanthic and they'd be double het for albino zebra. So, pretty cool. Actually, they would all be azanthic regular zebras het for albino. So they would be zebra azanthics, which are, are pretty cool looking snakes to begin with, and then they'd also be het for albino. And then those offspring, once bred back, can produce some pretty, pretty interesting babies. So there's a lot of good potential here. I really like carpets. I don't have a lot of carpets, like I do boas and ball pythons, but they're really interesting. I, I love their the whole way that their bodies are just sleeker. They got that tail that kind of wraps her, you know, is semi-arboreal, can grab stuff, and they're just kind of cool snakes. And, you know, I don't, a lot of people complain that their, their carpets bite them. Yeah, I've gotten bitten a couple times. Usually it's my own fault because it's feeding time and I have, you know, I'm just being a little stupid with them. But these guys are very tame. I'm not afraid to put my hands anywhere near them, to be honest with you. They're, they're, they're really good snakes. And once again, I really attribute that because I handle my snakes. You I don't handle them when they're in the breeding stages but I always I handle them from when they're babies and I think that makes it a lot better when you want to eventually you know work with them when they're bigger because they're used to you. Uh, I believe that snakes do know their owners. I truly believe that. Well hopefully you guys got a nice little taste of what I got going on here carpet python wise. You know a lot of people always ask me what I have in my collection and little by little I'm, I'm showing it off because everything's growing up now and I'm doing a lot of breeding projects. So Stay tuned for more. If you like what's going on here, uh, if you have suggestions for topics, feel free to post them below. And hopefully you will subscribe to the channel if you haven't and like this video because the more likes they get, the more inspired I am to do more like this. Dave Palumbo with Palumbo's Pythons and Boas for another installment of Muscle Serpents University.